Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering. We have Tyler on Death and Taxes versus Caleb on a mono black aggro deck. Like it's 1993 or something. Mono white versus mono black. A couple of aggro decks here. It's going to be a lot better than white knight versus black knight, however, as the power level of creatures, even in recent months, has really, really improved. I mean... Death and Taxes sets a pretty high bar for inclusion. Every time a new white creature is printed, people generally are all excited about trying it out, and Death and Taxes almost never makes the cut, but Skyclave, Apparition, real game changer, the three-mana Vindicate, now alongside Flicker Wisp as just incredibly dangerous things to happen when Vile is at three, and we've got a Fatal Push taking out the Stoneforge Mystic after it searches up a Batter Skull. We'll see if this Batter Skull ends up having any utility this game i mean five mana can be a lot and i do expect caleb to be going after tyler's mana base with at least wastelands which doesn't sound like very much for a mono white deck but you got to remember there's caracas rashad and port wastelands uh, so there are some things that can potentially be hit and there you go just on cue we've got a caracas along with thalia so dark confidant versus thalia we'll see which of these two drops proves to be the most impactful this game Caleb getting a snow-covered swamp out of this. Looks like he's split between, uh, I believe that's a APAC swamp and the new Caltime snow-covered swamps. I'm not sure if there's any strategic reason for the split. There have been times in Magic where you actually really want to do that for a card like Gifts Ungiven where you care about the names of cards. And here they're rolling for him to Torok. Oh no, no, the Batter Skull. The Batter Skull is... That is... Ugh. That is unfortunate, so they... Oh, good, they caught it. Okay, so I was... I don't know if I made my thoughts clear there. The Batter Skull was flipped face up in hand, which is something that people shortcut all the time in tournament settings uh, when they're trying to be friendly and keep the game state clear, uh, can kind of keep things moving along so your opponent doesn't have to keep asking like how many cards uh, that they actually know. Um, just general... Uh, a bit of good sportsmanship to a degree, uh, but there it could have actually backfired as they did roll the dice to find out which cards would be discarded, but didn't include the Batter Skull in that lineup at first. So Caleb ended up getting a little bit of extra information out of that and a Him to Torok. Uh, that was revealed off of Dark Confidant. We can expect that to be fired off. I mean, I'd probably have to fire it off now. I mean, if that Flicker Wisp hits... Okay, I mean, Caleb's prioritizing getting Thalia off the board. Does end up leaving a mana unused. And Thalia is cleared. However, this Flicker Wisp is going to be able to hit Recruiter of the Guard. Uh, unless Caleb has another Fatal Push, then that's going to be pretty solid. Recruiter of the Guard comes in for one. And that could be of of some value, given that Dark Confidant can get out of hand for Mono Black at times. They do play some three-mana spells, uh, Opposition Agent, Rotting Registor. Uh, looks like an Eliminate. That's a couple of life points there. And Tyler actually landed another Thalia, but now is going to be the time for him to Torok, I suspect, getting rid of that Batter Skull and the Flicker Wisp. Oh, wow. No, he's actually going with a... a Murderous Rider. I think he still has a him to Torok in hand. I thought that's what he revealed off of Dark Confidant. Flicker Wisp is... This is the engine. This is the engine. This is very dangerous. Uh, so... Flicker Wisp is going to remove Recruiter of the Guard. It's going to come back. Most common line is just loading up on Flicker Wisps, kind of a build your own Delver buffet, just continually adding more and more card advantage. Uh, the other option here would clearly be Stoneforge Mystic, given that there's a Batter Skull in hand, getting that down earlier uh, may end up being better, though Tyler can tap out. For the batter skull at some point and that would be pretty well lined up with the rest of this board well rotting registers i mean he's a big boy 
He's a big one. That is a large and in charge creature. Batter Skull will largely offset that, being able to swing in for four damage and have lifelink. I mean, even just blocking for a turn could be strong. It'll hold back everything else and maybe block the Rotting Regisaur, buying enough time for these Flicker Wisps to get the job done. Let's see how Tyler chooses to proceed. He's got some options. He's got a couple of Rashad and Ports. He can slow things down for Caleb. And he's actually going to jam a Stoneforge Mystic. And that's going to grab Umazawa's Jite. And with another Flicker Wisp in hand, let's see what he goes for. It's going to be Flicker Wisp into Flicker Wisp. And then when that Flicker Wisp happens, he's going to hit Recruiter of the Guard. And that'll come back during Caleb's end step. But there is six damage on board. Boy, if he runs Sword of Fire and Ice, then Caleb would be dead in the air. Thalia is cleared. Him to Torok gets both pieces of equipment out of Tyler's hand and everything turns sideways. Now, Tyler can crack back for lethal and there's only one mana open what is this one mana gonna do oh maybe it's nine damage maybe it's not lethal recruiter of the guard Gets a... Is that the new Luminarch Aspirant? The one that gives plus one, plus one counters? Well, eight damage available right now. Port taps down that swamp. Yeah, Tyler is going to be dead to this Rotting Regisaur. Absolutely gigantic. We've got a Dark Ritual Eliminate taking out a Flicker Wisp. And is this Dino Boy going to be too much beef? Four damage coming in. I had to just check Rotting Regisaur does not have Trample, so he can be chump blocked. Recruiter of the Guard has already done a ton of work. And Tyler going down to just one life. Better watch out if Caleb runs smallpox, that would be pretty brutal. And Murderous Rider. Now a Palace Jailer. And if that connects, this will exile Caleb's Oh, look at that. The new Remarkable Token slightly off screen. Palace Jailer. Oh, got the Rotting Regisaur. Thoughtseize, probably not going to be cast here. Down to three with Dark Confidant. And everything turning sideways. Tyler at just one must block. And that 3-3 Palace Jailer looks like it's going to be probably killed on combat. 
Caleb not activating. Castle Lockthwain to draw into his removal. A Sanctum Prelate. And a Phyrexian Revoker. And Castle Lockthwain. Looks like it's going to be activated. Oh, losing. I believe the school was 1 to 7, I believe. has been a very interactive game of magic down to one life apiece doesn't get any closer and that is going to do it swing in with three attackers Caleb just one blocker left And Death and Taxes kind of grinding out mono black aggro there. I may have to rewatch this one. This was really interesting. That Flicker Wisp on Recruiter of the Guard felt incredibly strong. And the ability to use that him to Torok when your opponent has only two cards left in hand is very tempting. Just in general, even if you don't know what they are. But the fact that it was a Flicker Wisp and a Batter Skull is very interesting. Tyler up a game. Good amount of time off the clock. Opposition agent, one of the high risk cards here for Tyler to play against. Things like Stoneforge Mystic, Recruiter of the Guard. Those can backfire horribly when you're dealing with any search effects opposition agent is a very real threat all right game two Caleb leading out with a APAC swamp Tyler with that aether vial which could provide incredible mana advantage over the course of the game death and taxes having this a really beneficial curve to take advantage of Aether Vial ramping up. There are some decks that basically just want to park it at two and just keep tapping it. Things like Sliver and Merfolk, for example. But Death and Tax is actually really happy to be tapping it for one, for two, and then eventually stopping on three. Uh, kind of similar to Goblins. I'd say it's a real debate which deck would be like a better Aether Vial deck in terms of, or which deck Aether Vial would be better in. Those are two separate questions. I suppose Death and Taxes does put up the better results overall. I'm not sure if that's representation within the metagame. Tough to say. Another Aether Vial. So, Umanzawa's Jite stuck in Tyler's hand for now. But it is important to get those Aether Vials... tapping for wow just Umazao GTA and a random card in hand Luminar Aspirant I believe is the name of that card from Battle or Zendikar Rising a Wasteland sets back Caleb a mana but Tyler's board is entirely two Aether Vials one creature which has now been Fatally pushed in an Umazawa's Jite. This is kind of a worst case scenario, though there are a lot of cards that could help out. Aether Vial, not one of them. Not helpful here. And Caleb got a Dark Ritual for a Liliana. Oof. That is going to be a problem on an open board. Now, Liliana, just an absolute murder machine versus most of Death and Taxes. They have tiny butts, and she just murders them. Everything from Thalia to Mother of Runes. I mean, it's really a problem from here. Fortunately, Tyler does have a whole slew of Aether Vials. Oh, man. This is no bueno. So, 
plague engineer coming down, kind of invalidating the point I was just about to make, is that Mother of Runes could come down during the end step and uh, potentially be able to untap and shut down this Liliana. That would be something. Now, it won't stop her from eventually ultimating, which is where this whole thing is headed, but... We've got a Umazawa's Jite and the counter removed to take out the Plague Engineer. And I'd be concerned about the ultimate from Liliana the Last Hope. Eldritch Moon printing. It's going to be fun to see the metagame reestablish itself now that Oko has been removed from the meta in terms of what the best three mana planeswalkers are. For a while, Liliana of the Veil was just the best planeswalker in the game. After that period, things were not totally clear. Dak Faden was uh, certainly seeing a lot of play. Jace the Mind Sculptor, uh, Oko, and Renin Six really raised the bar in terms of planeswalkers. Uh, now we have Narsa and Karn, the great creator, to consider. Wow, I actually didn't follow what happened there. I'm going to see if I can jump back. We got a whole bunch of Aether Vials and a Jit. I'm assuming that Liliana ultimated, but... Yes, okay, so Liliana ultimates, and I don't think Tyler believes he can beat that with this board, and then he scoops it up. That may be a first on the channel. I'm not sure I've ever done that before. Okay, that's fine. Moving on to the next game. Tyler leads out with a basic planes. And passes the turn. So no mom, no aether vial. We'll see what two drop made this hand worth keeping. Does Tyler value Thalia? Oh, actually, likely drew an aether vial for turn there. Audibling and getting that onto the battlefield. Aether Vial does generally swerve your plans. It's not the type of card you want to delay getting onto the battlefield. The utility of that card uh, is in how it helps accelerate your game plan. So the longer you wait, kind of the less impactful it is on the game. Even if Tyler had planned on putting out a Thalia on turn two. Liliana, and last time into an empty board, she was insurmountable. Aether Vial ticks up, and we got a three mana Skyclave Apparition, and that is a very efficient way to handle a card that otherwise would have been an absolute mess. Got a Liliana of the Veil, however, shows up, and we've got a token generated, something that doesn't happen that often. Now, Death and Tax is pretty well equipped to handle these tokens. In between Flicker Wisp, Swords to Plowshares, and just general adeptness at creature combat, the three threes, not normally too much of a problem, but really the bigger threat right now with the three three is the, oh wow, Liliana's Triumph. Big oof here. Let's see if Tyler can vial in anything. That is not the case. That is going to get rid of 
a card in hand and a creature, huge value. And Liliana going to tick up. Both players going to lose a card. A Wasteland. Not an all-star in this matchup. And this, so far, is showing a little bit of the challenge that Aether Vial kind of has. I mean, Flicker Wisp going to be able to KO this token. You know, Aether Vials don't do anything on their own. They, you do need other creatures. And I suppose it's probably best to compare them to just running lands in their stead. But there are definitely games with Death and Taxes where you end up sitting on like two or three Aether Vials and just not getting there. We have a Opposition Agent flashed in and a Swords to Plowshares quickly taking care of it. Him to Torok and Tyler now Hellbent. Rashad and Port going after Caleb's mana base, but no, and actually holding on to this one card, I'm a little surprised. Walking Ballista now. And Fatal Push takes out the Walking Ballista, which in turn pings the Liliana. No cards in hand. Fatal Push, really the only card there that made any sense was the ability to hold on to that. Whether or not it was worth not ticking up Liliana was the real question. And Tyler committing a creature, which is the more likely scenario than them holding on to a single card in hand. Flicker Wisp here, just resetting a planes, but with no cards in hand, not a whole lot of value to that. Liliana trading with the Flicker Wisp and huge damage crashing through. This is a critical turn here for Tyler. He needs a series of chump blockers to have any chance here, and Rashad and Poor is not going to do it. And Rotting Registor taking that one down. What a fun mix of cards here for this mono black aggro. And we see plenty of sideboard options despite being single color. Null Rod, a major. Major player here in Legacy, shutting down so many powerful artifacts. And of course, Plague Engineer, one of the stronger sideboard cards as well. That is all for this one, but don't worry, there is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.